question four, spreadsheet. So all the same notes count, but let's just quickly go through them again. We need to use formula and functions for all the calculations in the spreadsheet. Only use absolute cell references where it's necessary. Insert formula and functions to other cells. Sorry, insert formula and functions in such a manner that the correct results will still be obtained even if the changes are made to the existing data. I'm going to show you there's an um, example where we actually need this. And should you need to use building blocks, the allocated, use the allocated space in the spreadsheet. Right. Open the four passenger spreadsheet, which contains the data of passengers and work in the passengers worksheet. Right. So we're in the passengers worksheet. 4.1. Insert the file path anywhere in the worksheet header. All right, there's two ways you can do this. You can either switch to page layout view, and then you can actually go to the header and put in the file path. But then you need to remember how to switch back to the other view. Okay, the other way is to go to page layout, open up page setup, and in the header and footer command, you can choose here, let's see if there's, there's the file path, aha, we can actually use that. Or we could go to custom header and then insert any of these and you'll see it actually shows you um, what they are. So then I, if I had to specifically put it in the left section or put it somewhere else, then I could do that. All right, but that looks like it's all good. Right, some people in my classes uh, put a different first page for some bizarre reason. Please don't do that because it's not visible then when you open this dialog box. So please don't do that. 4.2. The flight number is created by using the first three letters of the passenger's surname in column C, a random two character number and the seat row. Complete the formula in cell A5 to create the flight number for passenger Alan Baker. Right, let's just quickly talk about how we're actually going to do this. So the first three letters just, the first three letters of the passenger's surname will be done with the left. A random two character number will have to use ran between. And the seat row, we might be able to just select the seat row, but let's check. It says, note the seat row is obtained by using the seat number, column E, and the data in the seat row worksheet. Okay, so this is a bit tricky, so it's not just as straightforward as we might have thought. All right, so let's check. So um, let me just double check where we were supposed to work in A5. So they've already done half of it, complete the formula in cell A5. All right, so A5. Ah, they've already done left for us. So the next thing we need to do is we need to add a random two digit number. All right, so let me do this separately for you just to show you. If I would have to do a random two digit number, I'm going to do it on the same row here. You would use rand between. Okay, now what's the lowest two digit number that you can think of? It's 10, right? 10 is the lowest two digit number. And the low in the highest two digit number is 99. Right, so there you go, we've got a two digit number. And the seat number, now again, do you see I'm doing this in the row? I'm not doing it underneath each other, I'm actually doing it in the row. The seat row we need to determine by looking at the seat number. So let's just go look at this manually and then I'll show you how we actually figure it out. So this person's seat number is one double one. 87 1187 so let's go look on seat row 1187 will then probably be row a hey i suppose okay so now that we've seen this table is actually horizontal and not vertical that tells me i'm going to have to do a h lookup and not a v lookup so let's do that separately as well and then we can go ahead like this h lookup of the seat number and you check I'm doing the seat number in row 5 not the seat row, row number of the record in in row 4 lots of people in my class made that mistake hey okay? the table array 
So let's just open this up in the in the function builder. So the lookup value is the seat number. The table where one needs to look this up is in the seat row um, sheet. And we're going to make this, we're going to make use of absolute cell referencing so that this can be copied down if it's necessary. This is the only place I think where we would have to do this. Definitely not the lookup value because that one needs to be able to copy down. The row index number is which row contains the answer. The second row contains the answer, hey? So that's going to be row two. And then the range lookup you'll see is optional. So you don't have to fill that in if you don't know. But in this case, it's actually going to be false. Sorry, not true. Because, no, it's, it's actually going to be true because we want to look up in intervals. We want it, up, we want it to look up between um, these values. We want it to look, look up between 1000 and 1500. Um, and then it needs to give us the closest value. Right, so there you go. And you'll see this one changes every time a new calculation is done. So now to add these all together, we can use either the um, ampersand um, sign and do it like that. Okay, or we could use concatenate. Concat or concatenate, both are acceptable. Oh, my cat's in the way. Concat, okay. And then the next argument, you'll see that's text one, hey? So text, come on, text one, text two is the rand between, and text three is the column number. Right, so that's what the final thing looks like. If you had done everything in one, it would look like this. It would be rand between here. 10 and 99 and the H lookup here. H lookup of the seat number in row 5, extremely important. And the, the lookup table is over here. Lots of people didn't use, didn't start in column A, they only started in column B. And the memo didn't have that as a correct answer. Just start on over everything. That's that's fine, but that should be marked correctly. Um, if it wasn't, um, your teacher should correct that. Okay, and there you go. That's what the final one should look like if you did everything together. But you are more than welcome to use building blocks. Just make sure you then do everything in the row so that one could possibly copy it down if you wanted to do it for the different records. Okay. 4.3. Now we're coming to a question that so many people um, didn't get right. Now, there are two reasons they didn't get it right. The first thing is the wording of the question was difficult. Um, it said use conditional formatting to display the rating, which was this column, in column H as follows. So the actual column you had to format was the ticket price column, and that was column H. So I don't know actually why they spoke about the rating. Um, that's, I think, what caused mass confusion for a lot of people. So there was a screenshot. Just look at the screenshot. Okay, so that's the first thing. The second thing is a lot of people, you, you might have seen, it says the circle colors are red, orange, and green. But a lot of people didn't see that there are four marks allocated to this question. So we need to look carefully there must be something funny with these with these symbols that we can get it right because four marks are definitely the it won't just be a default um, option so let's go have a look at what what it is so it's in column h it's not the rating it's the ticket price i don't know why they referred to rating so it's the ticket price you had a screenshot just look at the screenshot conditional formatting it's an icon set. We could see it's an icon set. And it was the red, um, yellow, and uh, green traffic lights or like icons. Okay. So that's the default, what it looks like. So let's just quickly move this over a little bit and see if we can figure something out here. All right. So that top one, I suppose that's probably red. I'm guessing that's yellow, but can you see there's not three that's yellow, so something's funny there. Um, 
I guess that's red again. It's difficult to tell because of the because of the gray. Um, but if I had to guess, it looked like there was probably the the lowest values were probably red and the highest values because if you look at it by now naturally the highest values are green the lowest values are red and the middle values are yellow so i suppose if we look at this you can actually see do you see here's a 2000 that's got a light color so i think the yellow started at 2000 and if we look carefully here, do you see there's a 4,000? There's a 4,000. And I think that's where the green starts. Let's see if we change this, if it actually um, comes out looking like this. Conditional formatting. So I'm going to manage the rules now because I've already applied this rule. I just want to change it. So I'm going to edit the rule. Now, I don't need to play around with this percentage. That's not necessary. I can just change it to number. That's what one of the marks were for. And I'm going to change the yellow to be greater than and equal to 2000 and the green to be greater than and equal to 4000. Ah, do you see the pattern looks the same? It's very difficult to tell because we have a black and white copy, but the pattern looks the same. So I think that was the final answer. And if I look at the memo, that was the final answer. But that's how I had to figure out the first time when I had a look at the paper. It's difficult because it's it's black, it's printed in black and white, and we're working with color. But that's why each question has to have a very difficult question. And in question four, this was the very difficult question. This and the one above it was the were the two ones that you had to really, really think and figure out. Right. So don't give up. It's four marks. You have to check why, why would they ask four marks for this. 4.4. Each passenger has to pay an insurance fee, which is not included in their ticket price. Column H. The insurance fee is displayed in cell K1. Let's just go have a look. So column H is their ticket price. The insurance fee is in K1. K. Okay, <laughs> right. Insert a formula in cell I4 to determine the price a passenger has to pay, including the insurance. Ensure that the function will work correctly when copied down to the other cells in the column. All right, so they have to pay an insurance fee. It's not already included in their ticket price. The insurance fee is displayed in K1. So it's 10% of the ticket price. So basically what we need to do is we first need to determine what's 10 percent of the ticket price so it's the ticket price times 10 percent okay but we need to add that to the original ticket price so then we need to say plus the original ticket price okay now i won't be able to just copy this down because look at what happens it actually copied down k1 each time Okay, that's, why, that's where we need conditional uh, absolute cell referencing. Right, so there's two ways we could do this. We could do this with absolute cell referencing, or we could actually do this with a um, named range. Let's quickly see if they actually wanted us to copy it down. They just say, ensure that it would work if we copy it down. We don't actually have to copy it down. So, all right, but to use absolute cell referencing, we just press F4. And then it will be able to copy down. We can test that. Do you see? It stays constant. The other alternative would be to give this a named to give to make this and to give the cell a name. So I'm standing on K1 and then I click there and I can call it, let's say, insurance. Enter. And now I can actually do this again. I'm just going to say H4 times insurance. Do you see here? Insurance plus H4. And it does exactly the same thing. Right. You can do that for a range as well. It doesn't have to just be a single cell. 4.5. 
insert a count ifs function in cell L5 to determine how many passengers use the Fly Safair Airlines with a rating level of 5. So they told us it's a count ifs. And we're first checking the airlines. Okay, now this is where that terms and conditions comes in of you're not allowed to insert a function in such a way that it won't work if the data changes. So if I do this and I choose one of my cells in the data as my criteria, what's going to happen if Brianna Anthony decides to fly with another airline? Or, decide, or tells us, oh, I made a mistake. I actually entered the wrong airline on my questionnaire. Then my whole function won't work anymore. So I can't do that. I have to type in fly Safair. And if you really, really, really don't want to type it in, copy this cell, paste it in your building blocks, and then you can use it from here. But you can't use it in your data can't use it in your data. So it's my airlines, my criteria. If you're really lazy and you don't want to type it in, you can click here, but then it has to be in a building block. It can't be in the data range. The criteria range was a rating of more than five. Okay, so this was an extremely tricky one. I'm going to do it the way everyone did it, and then I'm going to explain to you why it doesn't work. So lots of people just did this. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. And you think, hey, that's easy. And it gives us the answer of seven. Now, I know you don't have time in the in the exam to go and check this, but there's one, no, two, three. The answer is supposed to just be three. Okay. The reason it gives us seven is remember the function of a star. A star isn't just a, just a symbol like a, exclamation point or an at or a hashtag or something. A star is a wild card. A wild card means it can be any or no symbols. Okay. Or any or no characters. So if you actually want specifically five characters, you have to use the wild card that looks for a single character, which is a question mark. One, two, three, four, five. Remember, there are two different wildcards. We learned that in Access. It's the first time I've seen this wildcard used in Excel, but it's possible. That's the one solution. The other solution is to determine the length in the building blocks area. So you can do the length of the rating column for each of the um, different respondents. I'm not sure they filled in some form or something. And then instead of counting the rating column, we can just count the Q column where we determine the length now. And we say the criteria is five. And then we also get the answer of three. So those were the two options um, for determining who has a rating of five. And that's why it didn't work with the star.